Esquire magazine asks, if making funny television is so damn hard, how does Conan O'Brien's former sidekick make it look so easy? We have a new office mate. His name is Andy, like you. Won't that be fun? We figured we'd just call you Big Andy. <laughs> Why can't he be new Andy? Or I'll be Andy and he can be Black Andy. We can't run around calling somebody Black Andy. Introducing Andy Richter Controls the Universe, a new comedy premiering Tuesday, March 19th on Fox. I'm Andy Barker. I'm a private eye accountant combination. I've got a few questions for you. Andy Barker P.I., the complete series, starring Andy Richter. Oh, Mother Hubbard. And from the hilarious minds of Conan O'Brien and Jonathan Groff. We got business. Slip on your garter and act like a man. When mistaken for a retired private detective, earnest, hardworking CPA Andy Barker dives into a ridiculously off-the-wall double life. You're an accountant, Andy Barker. You go where the numbers take you. You just need to bring the thunder and the lightning. You got walnut in your teeth. Oh. I'm growing a set of jugs just looking at this thing. Your 9.15 is here. I'm taking my lunch. I'll be there for you, Andy. The enemy of my friend is my enemy, my friend. Excuse my French, but I am P.O.'d, and I would like to know what's going on. Every episode of this intelligent, critically acclaimed comedy is available in a two-DVD special edition. I found some cake in the fridge. Hey, that's for Donna's retirement party at 4.30. Oh, we're not going to be here that long. Investigate deeper into Andy Barker P.I. with informative bonus features, including all-new featurettes, cast and crew commentaries, and an uncensored gag reel. Own the complete series of Andy Barker P.I. today on DVD. Welcome. Welcome back to the show. Paul Derby and I, your host Sully, are dissecting comedian Andy Richter and his two short-lived sitcoms. So, Paul, how did you enter the TV comedy film? <laughs> well, as with most people, probably was already familiar with him from uh, his uh, stint with the uh, Coded. Uh, Coded, oh, bro. Yeah. Coded the late night toast. Yeah, I had slash, fun doing slash some. Barbarian. Oh, but, uh... yeah. <laughs> I love that skit in UHF. Yeah. I had no idea that Andy Richter was actually married to his Upright Citizens Brigade uh, co star, uh, Sarah Dyer. But yeah, that was apparently very recent. But that's wild. But I didn't even know he was married for some reason. <laughs> I oh. did, but I didn't think about it. Unlike Conan, who makes it part of his skit. But yeah, no, yeah, I mean, I I, I'm no. with you. I would always see him in different movies and shows and be like, that's Conan's assistant. And I've been listening to his podcast, Free Questions, lately, and it's always fun. Uh, especially because he's getting a lot of his old co stars and everything. <laughs> yeah, he's he, he was always good. Uh, I've, I've always found him kind of an underrated job. Yeah, I knew him some of his voiceovers and stuff like the Madagascar trilogy, and but then I started seeing him in every other Will Ferrell crazy movie. As yeah, he'd as... pop up there. I, I really loved his bit part he had in Talladega Nights. And totally, and he I guess I guess cracked me up in that. Talladega was good, but like even knowing that he was like a recurring co-star with Amy Poehler on both Upright Citizens Brigade and The Mighty B, which. And then even appearing as himself on Arrested Development. <laughs> uh, then then it, it was just so weird when I would see him play a villain. Where, uh, like he on Monk did, or Chuck. did pretty or, well at it. He, he uh, really did. He still, to this day, will talk about his brief role in Cabin Boy with Griselli. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, but I keep forgetting he was in Scary Movie 2 and yeah. in Trouble. Yeah, he's... I completely forgot about it being in big trouble, but it's been a while since I've seen that. I think we're forgetting about it now because Tim Allen's a dick. 
dickhead behind the scenes, but it's a good it's a good movie. It's yeah, it's it was it was a fun movie, definitely. I just so and when you find out what they cut out just to get that PG thirteen rating, I'm like, I'm not sure how they even got it. <laughs> yeah it, it just it sucks when stuff gets edited down like that yeah sometimes it's okay and then although times sometimes like, it works but it's just i can understand if it's like a spielberg take where he's like do everything you want to do in gremlins just don't kill the mom <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> everything else it's all good um but yeah I, i've seen him guest star recently on h john benjamin's adult swim show and Dion cole had a show for a while and that guy is pretty funny too. He really is, and I'll see so many people who are like, "I know, I've seen I was, him." And I'm like, "Dude, I was, that's kind of <laughs> yeah." I was kind of bummed when he left that gig. I really was too. I I just couldn't believe it, and I was just like, "But this guy is a hoot." <laughs> yeah, that, that guy was. <laughs> and, and anytime they pulled him in for a bit was just great. I I can't think of a single bit they pulled him in on. I did not just die laughing on. Oh, it's just. They they really lean on it, and I guess just the fearlessness just kind of helps. Just the whole the way thing. he delivered stuff too worked so well. <laughs> right. But uh, yeah. so and then anything else? Back to our, our subject to the yeah, I'll yeah, tell you. Yeah. We'll we'll get to the sitcoms for those who have seen Richter. <laughs> you might have seen him guest star as himself, even on Late Line for a Conan bed on SNL. Uh, for uh, you know various other skits involving Will Arnett, Bob Odenkirk, and mm-hmm. uh, uh, his other guest appearances include Will and Grace and Robot Chicken, King of the Hill, and the Service Silverman program. He's he's just basically kind of encourages that ensembleness, and I think just seeing him have the the stamina, the fearlessness to want to do his own shows you know five in a row is like that's awesome but uh, then it got even wilder how like you know on his podcast he 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 invited a uh, former co-star uh Paget brewster on and it was just really cool how and then he would have even other people on he almost always goes into detail on just everything wrong with sitcoms because like former writers of conan would work on just shoot me and they'd invite him on for guest spots <laughs> and Hey, he, he couldn't stand it because usually you know there's a test audience and then there's an actual live studio audience in this case it was just the writers laughing at their own joke and he's like why is that so funny <laughs> <laughs> it's just so funny hearing him say it, like he just got so like annoyed by it because if there's one thing he doesn't like is the sense of falseness <laughs> yeah yeah, uh, speaking of his co-star there, I was, I was kind of bummed. I, I would have, when maybe it would have happened eventually, but I would have actually loved to see him on the uh, short-lived uh, first uh, live-action Tick series they did. Oh, yeah. Man, to work on Patrick Warburton and some of these other guys, that would have been insane. Yeah, because, yeah, he was he was there. She was there. Just missing Andy. Both of them were, were well, where Warbert was in big trouble. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, it, it would have been really good. Totally. Uh, so and... we are talking tonight about these two sitcoms. There was the Paramount produced uh, CBS TV uh, show, uh, Andy Richter uh, Controls the Universe. That was a two season deal on Fox, basically, literally in the same year, like 02 to 03. <laughs> like, yeah, I'd, season one was short. They didn't think they were coming back after nine episodes, and they come yeah, back. Yeah, I think both seasons were basically mid-season replacement shows. They really were, and, uh, and hearing I him describe, they were. I, I thought they were so good. I, I really did. I, totally. Maybe I maybe I was being biased because of uh, Andy and stuff, but I I really enjoyed that because yeah, it was a big deal. It was just seeing him leave Conan, you know, and be a star, and they they would keep coming him back on, but each time he came back on, he wasn't participating in the skits. He's being interviewed by his former boss yeah. who's given yeah. permission to leave. And if it doesn't work out, you know, he can come back without rupturing any feathers, you know, and, yeah, just, yeah. and then he comes back and this time Jonathan Groff of Hamilton fame, he's the king who goes, la di da di da you know, created with Conan, his private eye parody show. And 
both shows can still be watched. Uh, any record yeah. controls the universe got a DVD release back in the day, but uh, they did have to make a few music substitutions for like three episodes. You can see, yeah, it's, they seem to do it's stuff minor. like that. That never really makes much sense to me. It's like it was okay at the time frame of that. It's like it's because they don't want to pay the record yeah, companies just, for home media rights. Just, which, I, I just yeah. don't agree how those rights all transfer and stuff. It's just dumb. I same, agree. same thing about the the. the, the that's a whole different thing. So yeah, shouldn't I concur? Right now. It seemed like Fox and uh, no Fox some of it, especially. Oh. oh, really? They they did some editing. I only knew they it, did it, it. It just seems that way. It's like yeah, it's just yeah. I only know they did it's it with a whole one different coffee episode, but for the most part, like any other show, like X Files or Homicide, that's finally been released on you know home media. They didn't have to do it. Yeah, it's just because uh, they were going thing, uh, for, they were going really large. Like they would have like six different commercial hits of the 90s like playing in one episode and here these were much uh, kind of more old school like motown songs so they really were a hoot because they're making fun of just like people daydreaming and other stuff <laughs> I yeah i can't uh i can't even remember what songs they used to that it's been a while since i've seen uh, it, sadly i don't think i've seen either show since they're actually on the air uh andy barker is now streaming on roku yeah and, oh nice so Seems six like episodes time to watch it again yeah it also got a dvd release but i mean i was even more confused at like the promotional materials because there was like one puerto rican gal on the cover and then it turned out she didn't make it past the test pilot and oh like, she's probably it. just in a pilot episode yeah, yeah that's, so just, weird. that's 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 weird stuff they do too they do a pilot and then most of the time like the vast majority of everything's just changed from the pilot to the actual series mm -hmm where they change out people or they change out the majority of people or yeah, it's just. Oh, totally. And it's a, it's a weird industry, I guess. But yeah, my, my, my sister <laughs> like binge watched this back in the day, like back when DVRs were first becoming a thing and we, we just couldn't believe it. And I'd get around the family with them because it wasn't too naughty. You didn't have to look away. But yeah, it's, it's a fun show. It's so wild. Uh, I mean, the, uh, the first one with him control of the universe, I would, I, I just love that one. It, uh, uh, just the whole just every everything just kind of revolved around them and stuff. Uh, it's so uh, weird how they were experimenting, and Arrested Development still got bigger as it went on, and this one kind of got big. But a lot of people seem to have resorted to the whole like, well, you know, I think I saw it. <laughs> like, yeah, then, the, the, then the weird thing too that show seemed to be seemed to be getting decent ratings, and then they came out like that. And they really did and I just, uh, but it's like I, they I, had I, to beg a certain way when he described recently in his recent uh, I, I just I just basically chalked it up as the same stuff of, of Fox seemed to be they still seem to do that right now but they, they, they really, really do doing that it's like they'd, it's they'd get something and then they just can it after a while and fortunately now people are realizing that people just don't have as much time. Not all of us are home bodies who can be home in time for dinner. So I think they're just realizing, you know, you know, okay, if it sucks on network, then we got to at least have this X percentage looking at Hulu by the end of this six months. Otherwise we're done, you know, uh, well, <laughs> but uh, it's I've even it more before. annoying because half the time is like, well, if you gave me another week, I could give you your money back by watching it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I don't like too. Is it's like, why do I have to be? When you put that responsibility on the viewer, they kind of get uncomfortable because you're kind of like playing God almost. It's like, oh, well, <laughs> there used to be a different yeah. way in which these ratings worked. <laughs> I, I blame a lot of it on Nielsen ratings. Half the time, they don't even seem to look at it. I don't. They, I don't know if they're. I don't know if they're still using those at that time. Actually, I don't even know if they still really use those at I all. I think these they days. do. They just. They. They basically. It's kind of like most businesses where people, if they get a crappy email, they basically got to come up with something. Otherwise, it's done, which is also annoying. It's like, well, that's not solving the problem. That's just getting people yeah. to stop yelling at you. Why not just think that's a that rating system to me just seemed like the same thing to where, OK, you get a stupid, funny movie out in the theater and you send some critic to go watch it. What kind yeah. of review do you think they're going to give for it? Oh, exactly. Just like the test screening is like, it doesn't like, really tell everything. What did you promote it as? And it's yeah. like, just expecting the magic to happen automatically is not a, not a way to do it. But 
it's funny you've mentioned that because inside Conan's also been exploring the various people involved with different late night TV gigs and they've all gone on to all kinds of things, other stuff, Chris Elliott, you know, other adult swim yeah. type show like Metal Ocalypse. And uh, what's funny is Conan was joking is like the biggest campaigner of his show was people was the same infamous uh, asshat who fired Norm MacDonald from SNL. Oh, uh, it was because Norm was making that's on pretty much up. the day I stopped watching SNL. Actually, I can't blame you, but um, it it was funny. Yeah, the same. So for those who don't know, uh, there was a head like VP of content programming or some shit, one of those main big wigs who was golfing buddies with OJ Simpson, and yeah. I don't know why he defended the guy, but whatever. And uh, what's funny is, yeah, Norm was just making constant jokes about his ongoing trial and everything, and the guy was not digging it. I'm like, well, to be fair, the guy is pretty infamous, so that's what the Weekend Update skit is, but I guess he yeah. just did However the dialogue turned out, it resulted in his termination at SNL, and it's one of those where it's like, come on, Lauren Michaels. <laughs> I know you wouldn't want to lose yeah, that easily. Yeah, messed up. I loved it as the Weekend Update host. Oh, yeah. I'll I take it over like... Dennis Miller any day. Please. Perfect, perfect delivery <laughs> for him. Totally. Uh, anytime he was on a talk show, he was the ultimate. I, him and Richard Belzer and Don Rickles and oh yeah, even on occasion maybe. Um, uh, dare I say, uh, 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 so many other guys just know how to convey. Just I mean, uh, the the nanny yourself. Uh, uh, oh, what's her name? Fran Dresser seemed to be just like the kings and queens of just be a smart ass. Just yeah, well, I, smart. I think they're also pretty good at reading their audience to kind of uh, to know what to deliver to them. Yeah, totally. Just uh, invite this, this kind of wackiness. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh man. Uh, but so uh, long story short, um, these were. It's interesting just seeing uh, just how these shows evolved and how they went through so many different uh, factions. And even though it was the wrong place, wrong time, they're still very much enjoyed by a lot of people. And I think it's just good that, you know, it's just so cool that they had a giant cast who's gone on to do so many other things, you know. Yeah. Again, yeah. I got Brewster's done numerous voiceovers in Community and Criminal Minds and already has a solid fan base. And then, uh, they actually did a reunion on this back when COVID first hit. It was online on oh, Zoom. Nice. I wish someone could have uploaded it. It was one of those private events. You have to pay to go to it. And I only knew about it because they made an IMDb listing for it. But uh, I know the Wendy gal who was always the cute receptionist is like she was a big theater Broadway gal. And so I was like, wow, okay, so that explains it. <laughs> uh well, what's the other guy? Uh, uh James Patrick Stewart Stewart, I think is his name. No. Um what was it? Uh, yes, actually, yeah. And with with a S T U A R T, yeah, he had been on the Galactica nineteen eighty <laughs> as one of the young kids, but he's uh, an accomplished soap opera star and voice actor in his own right. But yeah, he's done a lot of Justice League voiceovers as uh, Johnny Quick, <laughs> Captain Boomerang, but. Yeah, uh, I, I I was I remember when I was just looking at it, and I was like, oh my god, he's been in everything. <laughs> God's the Gettysburg movies. Imagine that with Eddie Murphy, man. Okay, <laughs> episodes of various other things like Jag and Frasier and Babylon Five yeah. movies. And it was like, geez, so I've seen more of him than I realize I've seen. But it was just so cool that he had. That was like his attempt to just be the handsome guy, uh, but who's self-aware. Like he's the guy who basically you know, just playing Keith. It's like so funny how Andy Richter's kind of the straight face guy with the outrageous plan. And he's the guy who's just kind of like just acknowledge everybody and eventually you always win. <laughs> and so here he is, like <laughs> sleeping with every other person in the office. And you're like, oh my God. <laughs> There's some stuff that I don't, don't think would date as well today. And I don't know how much of that is just comedy going too far or yeah, how there's, I don't know, there's, there's there's a lot of old stuff that were 
yeah, a lot of people say it does translate well. Uh, certain certain stuff, I mean, I don't know, maybe I just got more of an open filter with some stuff because I grew up with it. So I, I don't know. It's yeah, to say. It's, it's bizarre. It's like, I don't know how much of it is just people get uncomfortable or just humor is just hard to predict. I mean, before cancel culture, it seemed like you know if you screwed up and you just had to make a shitty apology and really convince people you mean it even if you didn't you know and it seemed yeah. like it just now it's gone beyond where it's just like whenever i see so and so has been canceled and i'm not preaching for or against it but it's just annoying to see that hey you know what whatever happened to hey i found your joke hurtful can you just not make that anymore <laughs> Yeah, that's just instead of too, that there's just you. a lot more <laughs> a lot more things going on too than there used to be. I mean You did a yeah. terrible job, you can't say that. Yeah. <laughs> it's like being growing up through the uh the time frame where there was basically like three networks on TV. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we don't realize how good we got. Well, yeah. Well, it wasn't a whole lot of stuff going on. <laughs> right? Well, unless you had cable, but I didn't have cable, so even then they would still <laughs> give them notes on, hey, you know, don't go this far, you know. Yeah. Then we gotta do some explaining. <laughs> but yeah, uh, and, and, I mean to me though too, when 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 you go into comedy, uh but it, it, it all depends on the comedy, but especially insult comedy. And I, I love a lot of insult comedy. <laughs> Rickles was the king of that. Oh yes. <laughs> something about it man <laughs> uh plus there's 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 other ones that were just as good too but uh oh uh, yeah anytime insult comedy is involved there's always going to be a hurt party it's it, it can't exist without it basically it's just there is i think it's just but, I, but I, I think there's there's variations too i mean there's oh exactly there's a way to tiptoe into it versus embrace it fully yeah. and then make people think i mean there's even ways to kind of remind, like, for instance, I guess, like, some of these other shows that, like, Boston Legal and uh, any of those Archie Bunker type sitcoms, you know, like them or hate them, they at least remind you they're in on the joke. They know that the person, you know, it's kind of like St. Elsewhere. Yeah, they know that yeah. the characters, like, or like all these other guys are pigs. I mean, they're even called that. So how can you not know that they're not in on the joke? <laughs> it's amazing how we have to kind of remind people, okay, well, this is why this is that way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Certainly does. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, there's there's always going to be somebody who's going to be not too happy about certain things. The, the, uh, but, but yeah, there's there's definitely some that are more than others. But no, I, I, I don't remember much of anything from either of these shows in, in that nature. Yeah, so. I mean... Uh, near the end, there's the one uh, bizarre coworker who's uh, sleeping with Andy's grandmother, but that's it. Like that's all. As oh weird yeah, as I do remember that. It's just like, what the fuck is going on? But see, they do embrace how weird it is. But it's weird too how it had a TV PG rating, and then like risk development, there would be times where it's like, mm, make sure you have an adult in the room if you want to explain this awkward moment. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, probably wasn't the best thing for kids, but. Uh... <laughs> it wasn't the worst either you know it wasn't no like, no no it wasn't like i mean scrubs is funny for instance but you still want to be 13 before you hear half of what they're saying <laughs> it's yeah. it, it's just bizarre how like they were able to do what they did they were able to beg get a second year and then after that like they had to kind of you know he goes back and does movies and then he comes back does his other show and then after that he was like done but i think what's funny about i guess his noir private eye show is again the character is not an actual private eye he's just acting as one and, yeah he's he like an accountant or something and just all the other guys just like um marnish manosh i think is how you pronounce it yeah, uh, it's, he, it's kind of a it was kind of a case of mistaken identity exactly exactly and constantly I, I love that opening line in the pilot is revisiting how uh, the one guy is like uh, Tony Hill goes to Andy Richter's character, you know, who again, you know, he's a tax filer. He's not a consultant. He's not a private eye. And they, they ask him, he's like, oh my God, 
this person that they, they, did they hand you the envelope this way oh my god dude you just got chinatown and he's like what's that i've never seen it you never seen chinatown i thought it was a jackie chan movie i'm like that's fucking awesome that's <laughs> And having Conan like make cameos on both of these was great, uh, just because I mean, especially when he plays a weird boss in Control yeah. the Universe, is like that was the ultimate acknowledging of just kind of meta without being meta. Like he's not playing Conan; he's just playing a weird executive visiting for the week and who invites him on a private jet. <laughs> and then he, it's like he jumps off and starts skydiving. And you're like, what the hell, Conan? <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> fearlessness man that, that that show i thought was just the perfect vehicle for uh i mean there's all kinds of certain stuff they could do on it and get away with it i mean if it uh, came so, back like so if to it, me, it seems like it, it, it could have been a writer's dream just because of that uh, dude if they brought this onto conan's uh official site that would be insane <laughs> That would give it a whole different life. I mean, you could probably put Controls the Universe on Paramount Plus. But as of now, yeah. you can watch all the on-cut episodes, and it's a lot of fun because they're clearly VHS rips or DVR rips. So you're seeing the Fox logo or reruns on, like, the other foreign Paramount channels that aren't Spike TV. So it's just, uh. it's interesting seeing how it's rerun on there on occasion, and people have reruns of these that they're sharing on youtube with the music intact so nice let's hope it finds a second half but yeah that'd be interesting i, I know i was I, I was hoping it could go somewhere after it ended a while back wasn't sure if it ever would have it then but I, I was hoping for it i mean so, out of all the canceled shows it's just at least good to know that he did it twice and he was able to just kind of Again, just come back to Conan, you know, no foul. <laughs> uh, ruptured any fetters. It's good to know that all these guys have had giant careers and stage or different kinds of comedy. And I even asked one community group when I was referencing Al Pagat Richard on both of those. And a lot of people seem to have seen that in Arrest Development. So it seems like kind of like The Office is like it comes in waves. Certain people want a certain kind of comedy, so they end up pretty much watching all those different ones just like the different other you know horror anthology shows and yeah <laughs> procedurals. I, I, I seem to remember uh uh after uh norm got fired there that there's a couple of different uh, uh shows that he starred in they they tried to do on oh yeah <laughs> i think nbc or abc if i remember right by the yeah. cbs that that mm -hmm. That, that one I thought was really good. Uh, the other one I thought was decent, but... Uh, yeah. What's weird is Conan even... I can't like, remember the name of either one of them, though. Conan would even follow Andy on to some of the same stuff. <laughs> like, he yeah. Would, he, uh, he would, he, they were both in Halo 4 together doing some voice cameos, and then they... Uh, Conan even got roped into doing a Madagascar TV show cameo. So it's like, yeah, they're they're all there. They're all out and about, but you never know until you just keep track of it. <laughs> yeah, Conan was uh, somewhat involved in that uh, final space show that they, they did a few years back. Really? Wow. Yeah, he, he I believe he voiced one of the characters or okay, one of the minor characters on it. I only it. saw the ads, so I didn't, I didn't know. <laughs> uh, I was enjoying the show, but uh, they, I think it got canceled the third season. Wow. All the time, dude, they just... They really like to just piss us off. <laughs> I mean, speaking of which, uh, do you remember when Conan hosted the 2014 MTV Movie Awards? Yeah. Uh, I, I got vibes of that recently when uh, I think it was uh, Bet was doing an award special and Dion Cole was hosting it just this last fall. And again, it was whack. I didn't know any too many of the artists and I didn't find it funny, but it was worth sitting through it because Dion had five different amusing segments so i'm like go for it <laughs> what can i lose <laughs> uh all together i mean it's just interesting also like <laughs> how they kind of just outdo each other it's almost like a <laughs> it's, it's like a comedic face-off like andy will see how many shows he can show up in and conan sees how many movies he can cameo in as himself <laughs> uh but 
uh, just having him in both uh involved with both of these shows i think was just kind of a loyalty in a way and i mean it was already meta enough that they appear on arrested development and conan's playing a psycho version of himself and andy's playing a <laughs> wimpy version of himself <laughs> being terrorized well. by conan we'll return after these messages Hello and welcome to Culture Shocked, the pop culture podcast brought to you by four aging millennials and our outdated opinions. Join us every Tuesday as we discuss movies, TV, games, and even music, new and old. Dude, what do you think you're doing? Are you seriously trying to record a promo without us right now? Well, uh, yeah. Dude, you can't just do the promo by yourself. Who's going to listen to that? Yeah, and you probably haven't even told them that we're a pop culture podcast where we always agree on everything. Uh, for instance, the Sam Raimi trilogy easily being the best of the Spider-Man movies. J no, no. But I think we can all agree that Jaws is a classical masterpiece. Mm, nope, don't like that. But we do all agree that the sequel trilogy of Star Wars is the best in the Skywalker saga, right, guys? That comment is so ridiculous i don't even know where to anyways uh that'll do it from all of us here at culture shock thanks for listening do you ever find yourself thinking about who would win in a fight between goku and superman hi i'm james gavsey and on the who would win show me and my co-host ray ignore anything important happening in the outside world and debate fictional battles between characters from comics movies and video games we got a new show every week and almost always am i the winner yeah <laughs> not true ray in the past we've discussed such matches as Captain America versus Darth Vader, Solid Snake versus the Iron Giant, classic matchups like RoboCop versus Terminator, and even the Muppets versus Sesame Street. That one was crazy. So if you're a fan of geek culture and love a spirited debate, check out the Who Would Win Show wherever you get your podcasts, or check us out at whowouldwinshow.com. We let things pile up in the DVR, we add them to our queues, we wait for the DVDs and Blu-rays. We time shift. The Time Shifters podcast. Sci-fi, horror, fantasy, superheroes, comedy, action, film, television, maybe some not-so-current events. Find us on iTunes or at timeshifterspodcast.com. Cool thing about Blind Knowledge is we are in multiple countries. We are worldwide all across the globe. We are in the U.S., we are in the U.K., we are in Canada, Germany, India, Japan. We're in Australia, y'all. BlindKnowledge.com. Now back to the feature presentation. I always find that's funny, too, when people play basically parodies of themselves and things. I totally just... Uh, it, 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 I've always found it funny. It just cracks mm -hmm. me up. Oh, and even when they unexpectedly just you know even the other productions they've been involved with is like and it wasn't even comedy based they're producing a dramatic show it's like damn <laughs> this Kanoko team coco uh, production studio just can't fail <laughs> uh but uh all together i mean were there any other kind of featured guest stars on our show that you think just really kind of yielded how you know one was just an atypical like workplace parody show and the other was just an unusual just making fun of private eye stuff while people encountering other colorful people <laughs> mock narration yeah. well, that sums up that second one pretty well that, that okay. i mean that's that's all of that show seemed to be which i which i loved uh especially because i well I, you didn't have to get I, the references even it's just uh, funny because they kind of just lean in on it versus I, say are we funny are we funny you know it's like no you're funny <laughs> just keep oh i thought it was and, yeah keep staring at us as opposed to rub it into the ground you know? yeah i, I might have found it funnier though too because yeah i was i was really into film noir stuff at that time frame oh, that, yeah. that was on and, so and even having uh, <laughs> jesse M. martin cameo as detector green from law and order i was like yeah. what are you doing here <laughs> okay <laughs> like because they were already in a conan bit which you can even get on dvd where he was like doing a best of special so it was like man it's like these guys weren't even watching that show but someone on their staff was, was like just bringing all these other guys and it's even funnier seeing starting comedians before they became bigger names uh yeah anthony williams was in the pilot and um uh what's her name uh the one gal being the weird receptionist that <laughs> 
that that really cracked me up because she just has a i mean you even look at her imdb and you can totally understand why she's on other stuff like reno 911 well i think that was just something that kind of i think they kind of did that anyway as it was kind of i could be wrong though but it, it seems like the kind of the impression that i always got because even back when uh Conan had his show and stuff going and he'd have people, certain people from the office on interviewing him. Mm-hmm. A lot of those people worked on Conan's show at one time or another. Oh yeah, no, no, totally. Uh, but I mean, this Nicole Randall Johnson, I mean, I looked her up and she's playing a gal named Nicole on there, but it's just wild. And it's like, wow, she's <laughs> worked with the groundlings and all these other groups. No wonder she's prospered. That's awesome. But, yeah. I mean, having the, the old man from the pretender as the old guy helping out Andy. That was kind of funny. <laughs> that was good. One of his still alive. Our press no. Nope. Passed away in 09. Man, he Ooh. lived. Well, that was a oh, good wow. final role. <laughs> Amy Sedaris, who, you know, again, worked with him on Strangers with Candy, was in one. The Lady Vanishes episode, a total Orson Welles reference. <laughs> <laughs> Ed Asner and James Hong. But yeah, I'm. Six episodes, you really can't go wrong. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, it, it ended too sh- ended too soon. Too 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 soon. At least give it a full season order. <laughs> yeah. but, but altogether, I mean, I guess it's just funny because I mean, just like how these guys get your attention. Like I always love seeing that charisma on command YouTube channel, and it's the same thing here. Is like here's why when you, on close examination, these guys stand out and play so well to the camera. You know. They they know how to just kind of again remind you to laugh without overstaying their welcome. <laughs> and Andy is definitely, I mean, he kind of lets the other cast speak for himself while he just has amusing narrations and controls the ears. But here on Barker PI, like he really leans in on just the dramatic close-ups and just a perfect like mixture of holy shit versus. Oh man, I fucked up. He yeah, just, he was. He, he was just uh, look like. Oh no! <laughs> it's the biggest case of mistaken Id- uh, identity, and he was just uh, he was just an all around nice guy who wanted to help everybody. So of course he takes the case. Oh totally, and it, it he. Well, and that's just what's weird too is like in controls the universe. Even though he was kind of. Uh, self obsessed, he wasn't necessarily always selfish, and he would always. It was funny. It was almost kind of like uh, Parker Lewis. Like if he yeah. fucks up, he that... finds a way to, or d- he pulls a Captain Kirk, so to speak. He doesn't break yeah, the yeah. rule, but he finds a third option as opposed to point that's A or point a, B. That's actually a really good comparison to that too. I I, I tried it. I, mean, I could I could see a I could see a lot of similarities between those two shows. Oh, totally. Because like they 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 didn't want to, you know, it, it, it's. It kind of just goes back to their overall drift. You know, you see every other talk show host going too far, or being criticized. I've never heard anyone talk shit about Conan unless they were just <laughs> someone who just never liked the guy. You know? Yeah. <laughs> there seems to be plenty of those, <laughs> especially in Texas. <laughs> oh. Hey, I'm not offended. It's true. No, that's a, to my understanding. That show was banned there for like the longest time. Really. Yeah, it was, it was kind of a coded, coded, just <laughs> coded. Brian was the, banned the, in the, Texas. Uh, wow. the, uh, the 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 late the late show. Maybe it was only certain parts, but uh, I, I can see that's it because because I, I I never lived in Texas, so I can't really verify that. I, it seems I used to, uh, but I'm sure in the early '90s, I'm sure there were some episodes they might not have aired because they didn't know if it would last. <laughs> I used to work with a guy who was from Texas, and he had nothing good to say about that guy <laughs> wow <laughs> he's probably <Yeah>. just jealous <laughs> that's my guess <laughs> <laughs> or maybe he wasn't in on the joke he's like eh, this wise guy eh? <laughs> but I, I i remember a bit they did uh in the, in the old show where they went down and yeah, to my it probably wasn't the show is completely banned, but uh, I think they went out someplace and found it on the air, but it was like at like two o'clock in the morning or something like that. And they were like <laughs> at a I'll just say it was like a bowling alley or maybe an airport lounge or something. I don't remember. 
and, and I think Andy was going around interviewing people about it. Oh, I can imagine. Just, it was, it was, it, it was great. I if thought if it was one of those <laughs> encounters like that, then I can totally see people somehow not being clued in, knowing how it works, or haven't seen an episode and then exploding. What the fuck? Yeah. Okay, so to my mistake, uh, correction earlier. I don't worry. I fuck up sometimes. Uh, so Jonathan uh, Groff is not <laughs> the same Jonathan Groff. It's not the the one from mine hunter and uh frozen uh, no the, the, this jonathan groff has worked closely with on all of conan shows as well as contributing to the daily show and uh, that's who co-created uh richter show and get this he became a producer and writer on ken barris's black af and the blackish franchise so that's how andy richter got on there let alone dion cole you know joined the cast so that makes better sense to me now it all uh, it all flows it all flows <laughs> oh man i see uh this i never realized until looking at the cast here again that uh sean gunn was apparently on the series yes it's so weird as a recurring punk who's basically it's like he and another guy are playing people who never grew up, basically, and they're just playing like weird, just mind games with people. But it's weird; they're, they're kind of perverts without leaning into it too. <laughs> <laughs> That's what well, makes so the character fun. It is, but it is. It's just interesting how, like, it just you 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 don't know what you're getting into. And I I, I do have to compliment uh, Paget Brewster as being the boss. It was just cool to see a female boss of the office. <laughs> Uh, when she realizes she's going out with someone who happens to have a twin is like that i don't think that would play as well but at least she's in on it <laughs> yeah yeah it, it kind of goes into that am i being shrewd or am i being fucked <laughs> <laughs> and uh all together it's just i mean the music is so good on this on controls of the universe because like uh, yes the theme song was done by uh one of the guys who was part of Yes, I'm an asshole. I don't know his name. Sorry. And uh, he was part of the band Weezer. And I think it just has that right kind of rock vibe to kind of just let you know you're in for a party time of a show. And then it does all this kind of lounge mixture of lounge music and other kind of light just trumpets. And it it gets you in the mood. It's like, you know, something funny is going to go down. (laughs) It's just so weird. I don't know how anyone came up with any of these workplace ideas, especially when, you know, previously they just weren't known for being hits. They were either just like dramas about broadcasting or they were something like Office Space, which was, you know, totally flopped at the time and became a cold hit a year later. <laughs> yeah, I'm confused about that one. So, yeah, the, I thought that was great the first time I see it. <laughs> it's, just, it's like so many people have ideas and if the marketing department goofs up, they still, they have enough sway. They, they go, Oh, it's cause that guy sucked. And it's like, no, it wasn't cause they sucked. It's cause you screwed up. <laughs> you yeah. Find a single, you know, remember, I, I do kind of miss the days when trailers were produced in studio as opposed to, you know, just the typical, well, I mean, <laughs> we hired <laughs> someone else to do it. So therefore. Yep. That's when you get weird uh, things, and yeah, that, that, that's where you end up with something where uh, it, it's got the characters and it shows something they did, but they never actually did that because it because that part got cut out. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I hate that. Everyone looks like an idiot, and then you find out with the director's commentary we had this and that. I. Uh, uh, what was it? I I think. I was listening to this one podcast which reviews infamous movies and a lot of them are all cult hits that ever you know yeah almost all of them are going to have like a 20 40 percent critical rating and the audience call them dumb or not are going to give it a 70 or 90 percent you know <laughs> they're reviewing demolition man and they were talking how Stallone finally explained what the seashells joke was about and you're like oh wow no wonder that guy cut that would have been too much but it's just so funny how I, show- know, I think it's definitely funnier without explaining it it could be i mean it, <laughs> it seems like there's all kinds of jokes which is like you you really don't know how you want to explain it to people and you don't know how much of it is just again the time and place <laughs> the societal yeah. norms i mean especially in when you're making fun of stuff that isn't a societal norm <laughs> it's like how do you 
make fun of people without feeling like they're being left out. I mean, it is good that they're all part of Conan because they basically had the freedom to just be weird and go in their own direction. <laughs> but it seems like that's just it. Like you gotta just uh, as I don't know how many of the broadcasters are just afraid of getting sued anymore. It seems like that's a change now too. People don't care, but they're still afraid. Every once in a while, someone might say something that they'll have to pay a penalty. So it's just like, I don't know yeah. how much of that is them doing gatekeeping versus just where we just don't want to take a risk <laughs> unless someone else does it. And then we want to rip them off. <laughs> yeah. It's hard to say there, but I'm sure a lot of it's happening that way. Ah, uh, Yeah. Uh, it's so annoying when I would go to like a film creative meeting and I would pitch an assassin film and I would have to always make a comparison up front. Like, I'm not trying to make it like Tarantino or John Wick and not that I have a problem with those. I'm just saying <laughs> it doesn't have to be like those. <laughs> yes, there are other ones that exist outside of those. other ones. <laughs> oh. What can you do? Oh, that would be rough. It is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it sucks even more when you have to convince people, hey, we got to promote it just like this or that. And if that person doesn't care for that show, it's like, well, I just want to give you a, some of the same audience. I'm not asking for you to like this. You know, it just seems like some people, will they hate being compared to other things. It's like, well, people are going to compare you even if you don't want to be it's, compared. Yeah, there's always going to be a comparison. Even if you make... I don't think that's really even possible these days, but say you actually come up with something that's completely different from anything that's been done. There's still <laughs> going to be comparisons. Yeah. Uh, like J. Michael Straczynski can say, hey, I won the lawsuit against, you know, Deep Space Nine, but in all fairness, they made it to air first and he had to rework his pilot after negative reviews from critics and uh, <laughs> program testers. So it's like... Mm -hmm. You know, the pilot technically came out before DS9 would beat Babylon 5, but at the same time, eh, it wasn't quite there yet. So yeah. it needed to go to air a year later. <laughs> uh, altogether, I mean, uh, do you have any favorite characters or get running gags that happen in either of these shows? <laughs> uh, well, if my memory was fresher, I probably still would. Uh... <laughs> But uh, unfortunately, yeah, my, my memory's not so great on those shows. How about just uh, uh, when he first is on a date with Wendy on Controls the Universe? <laughs> he's, just, yeah, he's just going around. He's like, and then it turns out, oh, I've hilarity stuck ensues. this or that. Yeah, it's like they, <laughs> it, and as hard as it is to explain some of these outrageous gags, they're not random, if that makes sense. <laughs> no. Compared to other shows where it's like, wait, what? <laughs> No, I thought. I mean, the the way that show goes, I I thought it was uh, very smart, especially for the time frame. Just, just I mean, the way it they made sense. Things. He, you know, I guess he would have been in his thirties at the time. You know, he when you, when you max out your age, you you know, there's a certain kind of marketability and everything. And he's been so fortunate to not get, not always get typecast. You know, as a Jack Black type role, and that's not a dish yeah. on Jack Black. I like that motherfucker in his own right i'm just saying <laughs> he's just, uh, it's rare for a comedian of his stature to get an everyday average joe joke instead of you know make fun demean himself make fun of his weight or something and it seems like that was the norm for someone like that if you're not attractive you gotta be a bad guy or you gotta make fun of your weight and it's like no <laughs> <laughs> i'm already making fun of myself every day as i know <laughs> Yeah, it's good stuff. Good stuff. It really is. Um, but yeah, I, I've explained it many times to all these other guys. It once again, they have been. They are all available. You can find them just about everywhere, place, everybody, anyone who's got them. Uh, check them out. I'm sure you can find the DVDs dirt cheap. <laughs> yeah, that's, I've definitely been meaning to pick them up again and watch them because, yeah, like I said, it's been a while. Yeah, it seems like any other show that can be canceled it seemed like it can be just too much work just trying to get it together but just glad that they were able to figure it out and make it happen yeah yeah definitely 
everybody check it out you don't know what you're missing if you again if you like all these other kinds of shows that we mentioned risk development the office parks and rec you're gonna have a blast if you don't they're both they're both good shows uh, it's a shame neither one of them had a long time went longer but of course the if the first one went longer then we never would have had the second one but uh, oh yeah just that sharp kind of comedy like i feel the yeah. nails like getting into me and i'm just instead of screaming with pain i'm screaming with laughter it's like yeah a, yeah an eagle's talent it like just it scoops you up and it takes you along a ride these are these kind of shows you just feel like you're on a speedway and you're just go fine non-stop <laughs> Okay, as far as comedies went too, but both of those shows, to me, they seemed a lot different from a lot of the other comedies that were around at that time. Exactly, too. like you can't explain it. You got to just watch, sit down, and watch it, and just gut bust. Yeah, <laughs> very enjoyable. Totally, totally. Highly recommend. Highly recommend. Follow us on the web on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. The podcast is available on Podbean, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Anchor, Apple, and anywhere else podcasts are available. Feel free to review our show and leave comments on any of those sites. Thanks a million for listening. It's a jacked up review show.